what's going on, Saul and Steph? It's Miss Ward coming to you. I was sitting here thinking to myself a minute ago. I'm about to head out to Miami, hang out with Richard, hang out with the students, and get it in. Just got back in town this morning from D.C. Learned a lot of things in D.C. about life and choices. So, you know, I figured I was going back to my house to get ready to get all my stuff packed so I get on the road. But you know what? Some say go to the school, go help somebody that needs some help. While I'm helping them, I'll be helping myself. You know, I decided to take this route. Um, I'm over in a place called Pompano off Copens and Blount Road. And there's a huge uh, homeless facility over here. Every time I pass by, I see people on the side of the road lined up, you know, people with nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, they don't have nothing. So sometimes you have to take a look at those of us who are less fortunate, you know what I'm saying? Those of us, you know what I'm saying, people who really out here struggling, who got real problems, to realize you ain't got nothing. The mere fact that we got up today, the mere fact that we got an opportunity to go out here and make our own way, those of us that own our own businesses, those of us that have great paying jobs, those of us that can see our future bright, all we got to do is stay focused. You know, sometimes you got to go back and look at these people that are struggling, man. It's crazy, man. Like, I go by here, and uh, I remember in the past, you know, I, I'll never forget the same street I saw a dead body in the middle of the road. Somebody had shot somebody up at the corner one day. And I was headed to the turnpike, and I was thinking about how people have no respect for life. None. You know? And this facility, I think it's some type of residential transitional housing facility. But it's a trip. It's right here in the middle of all this industrial stuff, man. Just think everybody in this, on this street can give these people a job or a trade or an opportunity. The key is do they, you know? It kills me how people don't realize you one paycheck away from being in those places, in those spots. You know? So that's why I keep grinding, man. I... It took everything I had to take a little time off this weekend because I'm so focused on the business and I have poured everything I have into my business and into my future, into my retirement plan. So I don't really have time to play with people. That's why a lot of people can't get me on the phone. You don't see me doing a lot of this, a lot of that because we're expanding so quickly and with to whom much is given, much has been is respected. You know, Saul put a call into me from Marcon. He's always on top of uh, taking care of me from my vendor side. And, you know, I could not be successful without his support. You know, you just think about that. You think about the fact that, you know, I remember when I first started, nobody knew who I was. They thought I was weird, strange. They didn't understand how I went to business, but they don't understand, man. There's so much, like I have so many systems in place so that not only is it somewhat automated, but also I can build the government contracting piece. I can build the training piece, all those pieces that are important to me because I'm very clear that your business has to evolve. And the problem is most people are not willing to evolve. You know, we look at our human frailties, we look at our shortcomings, we look at our heartbreaks and all these personal, emotional things we go through. You cannot allow this stuff to affect your business. And I see it all the time. Like, I had to check somebody because they made a move and I was like, really? That's crazy to me. Like, I don't even understand how people even think on that level. But then I had to realize, you know, not all of us are cut from the same cloth. You know, I'm not a W-2. I am a business owner, and my business is constantly growing and shaking sh and moving. So I got to move with it. Like, every day I see examples of people that start out really bright, and they get burnt out. And they get burnt out because, number one, they don't have a plan. Number two, they open up the floodgates. And then when stuff comes through, they can't handle it because they don't have any infrastructure in place. And I'm not knocking anybody because the only reason that half of us are decent, shout out to DCNF, my boy. Uh, you know, shout out to Slick. 
you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're looking at people who have systems. Shout out to Lamar, unbelievable systems in place with his team. You know, at the end of the day, the only way people have these systems in place is because they bumped their damn heads and they knew they had to come up with a system. Same thing with Gio. Now, Gio is a monster, man. Courtney, monster. These guys, man, let me tell you something. These guys will be sitting on boards. They're going to be leaders in their industry, in their industry, and people don't understand. Yeah, they might be stumbling and, and making you know, what y'all might consider dumbass moves right now, but that's what makes you great is when you keep making them and you get better and better every day because you're willing to step out and make a move nobody else is. You know, all the rest of y'all want to fall in line like, you know, one, two, two, one, one, two, one, two, hut, one, two, all that mess. The reality is it ain't built for you like that. And that's what you don't understand unless you have the resources. And when I say resources, unless you have the funding, the grants, the business credit, and know how to structure and manage that stuff, you know, you're going to be stuck, you know. Like with me, I ran my business to, to a certain extent off my debit card because I wanted to be debt free. And I did that for a long period of time because I knew what came with adding, excuse me, y'all, additional. Ooh, I got the hiccup. Y'all got to excuse me. And I don't have one bottle of water. And I usually am filled with bottles of water here. You know, the reality is you got you to gotta get out here and get on this grind, man. And you got to be true to it. You got to stay focused. And as you add additional things to your business, like, for instance, you look at me, I have all my vehicles are 2022s. That's not cheap, people. And they're 2022s because of the caliber of customers we deal with. Then on top of that, they're not the minis. They're the full-size 250 and 350 vans. So that is a whole nother gas component, you know. But all this stuff has been built in place because I charge accordingly. I can do that. You know, if I was out here trying to be greedy and, you know, take all the money from the, my, you know, the people that assist me, the subcontractors, I make sure everybody eat. And then a lot of times I'm the last one to eat, you know. You know, thank God for uh, profit first, you know. At least I get paid because of that. But that goes back to systems. You know, people don't understand how important it is to put money away on the side and say no. You know, there are people who don't own businesses. They don't understand that when an entrepreneur is saying no, we're not saying no because we don't want to. We're saying no because our business has to thrive no matter what, you know. And I talk to guys all the time, and we always have that conversation about vacations. Yeah, we want to take them, and we put money aside to take them. But at the end of the day, we understand how it is if our industry gets slow. We have to be so diversified that we have to keep the business going on a consistent basis. How do you do that? You have to stay current. You have to stay on top of this, and you got to be on cutting edge. I mean, period. And then you got to figure out not only how you're going to get the jobs done quickly and one-stop completions, but how you're going to make sure you keep it consistent. You know, and that's my thing. I am constantly in constant communications with my clientele. I use the latest software. I communicate via Zoom. I text pictures, images. I make sure that everything is structured in such a way that anytime I have to communicate anything to a subcontractor or someone in the staff, it's very clear. I don't mess up the communication because they actually get a copy of the conversation between myself and the customer. That's how thorough I am. But uh, that software I use is WorkEase. They record everything. Everything's tracked from time to, you know, clock in, clock out, how long the job takes, you know, where the technician is. I mean, come on, y'all. This is modern technology. Y'all out here, and, but what y'all don't understand is you're going to have to invest in stuff like WorkEase and do it apply it to yourself. The only reason I'm able to use WorkEase to the extent that I did because I applied it to myself as a one-man shop. And then as I begin to expand and add people in different regions, because I have people working for me in Savannah, about Austin, Niceville, Fort Walton, Destin. I'm blessed like that, but y'all have to understand those are relationships because I don't play with their money, number one. When they go to the job, they're thoroughly informed. They have no issues with the customers and the parts of that when they arrive. Like how clean can the operation be? But it's that way because I keep everybody in the loop. My techs know they get copies of the 
tracking numbers. They know when the parts arrive. They get snapshots when the parts have been arrived and been signed by, for by the customer. They get snapshots of the customer's uh, property and the appliance and the model numbers. They know what they're walking in. They have a clear view of the symptoms, what's going on, and I only deal with seasoned techs. Now, if I'm dealing with seasoned techs, that means I have to pay accordingly if I expect them to do a good job. But on top of that, I got to be on top of them for quality control. That means I got to go behind, I got to double check, I got to follow up with the customers, and I got to be present. And this is why I'm always on the road, because I'm very clear that I have to be boots on the ground. There are not a lot of people willing to make those commitments. But I made them because I understand how to not only build a business quickly, but also how to cut out the fat and put systems in place, whether it be apps, programs, spreadsheets, standard operating procedures, so that I don't have issues. Every time me and my team run into an issue, we, we sit down as a team and we have that conversation. We have that Zoom call. Okay, what can we do to keep this from happening again? And then we put it in place and we don't look back. See, this is what killed me about a lot of people. If you will have a, someone mess up a job or have an issue and you want to beat the hell out of the employee instead of having the, let's have the come to Jesus movie. I know that, you know, you know, this was not intentional. And then come up with ways to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's not that hard. But most of y'all be running around in y'all damn feelings, you know. Get out your feelings and get back to business. I have to tell myself that on a regular basis. I'm in my feelings right now about a lot of stuff, but guess what? I keep it moving, because them feelings ain't paying no bills. Them feelings ain't putting the money in the bank. Them feelings damn sure ain't getting the bag. They in the way of the bag. So what y'all gonna do? I'm gonna curl up with the bag. I don't know about you. But with that said, y'all, I gave y'all enough game for the day per usual. Headed to Miami to hang out with Richard, get this knowledge through osmosis. Of course, he'll have to be put my ass to the test, because only he can. With all these problems, he's throwing these uh, appliances for me to fix. But you know, that's a beautiful thing because it keeps me on top of my game and I ain't trying to be slow. I mean, I'll be in there, I have one seal system job going, vacuuming down, topping off, you know, whatever I'm doing on that. Then he'll have me over here pulling out uh, the core, built in, you know, high end range with the six burners, double oven, and the griddle. You know, where's this? Where's this component? How does it function? How do you test it from the board? He be looking at me like I'm crazy. I be like, really, bro? But the reality is I love it because when I walk in these environments, I am top notch like I've been doing this shit for 30 years because I'm willing to pay that price. Most people would have came back from D.C. chilling. They would have been dragging. No, I know I got to get on it because, you know, in my mind, I mean, yeah, it was cute in D.C., but at the end of the day, I missed four days. I got to go get it. That's what I understand. What do you understand? Y'all be blessed, man. Until the next time, keep stepping, solid steppers, and take the Titans. Do what you got to do to transition from being a tech to a Titan, one step at a time. Fine-tune every skill you need to, starting with your technical expertise. Get your technical expertise down, because if you don't have that technical expertise, shout out to Brandon, Brother B, you going to sink. You're going to lose so much money in appliance repair from hiring people to do the job, not understanding how they do it. Don't understand this. Don't you ask, how do I know? So at the end of the day, I'm telling you, get your skill set together. You don't have to work on every appliance, but your ass damn sure better understand how they work and understand theory and the processes. This is why I go back to basics every time I can. Every time I home, I'm home, I try to go to Miami and get it in because I am always learning always and I'm willing to help I'm out there able to help the students they run into issues I ran into and help and coach where I can while I'm getting mine that's what we supposed to do see I ain't probably no problem helping people trying to get it but y'all ladies and y'all know don't don't lose my number this boy don't play that I can't stand let me tell y'all I'm gonna get off for real my biggest pet peeve when somebody called me ain't got the service manual shout out shout out to Mike Sneed don't have service manual number one ain't at, signed up for nothing ain't even cracked the manual but want you to tell you them how to do it let me explain something to you them days is over y'all has better learn how to troubleshoot from the board y'all better understand how to listen to something listen hit the button and see if you hear clicks on the control board understand when you hear a click what does that mean it stopped what is that telling you like the, if you listen to the appliances they give you the damn answers Half y'all ain't listening. Y'all up in y'all head. Y'all need to
to go in, look at the appliance, gather as much information as you can, and get it done. And realize you're going to have issues. You're not always going to be right. That's how you get better. I'm telling you what I know. Don't look back, y'all. Just keep stepping. All right, I'm really out. I got to get focused, man. I heard there's some type of delay up here. Y'all know I ain't really feeling this. Welcome back to South Florida. We get slow as hell. Uh-oh, I'm coming up on the guitar. Hard Rock. Seminole. Hard Rock Cafe to the left. All right, y'all, be good. Remember, y'all, we're in the second half of the year, so all that stuff y'all jacked up the first six months, you better clean it up now. You got 30 days, and then you need to get smooth selling. You know everything your ass did wrong in the first six months. You know how slow you were. You know how half-assed you were. Y'all better get this bag, and don't look back. All right, holla. This ward is signing off.